Greetings, cherished listener, and welcome to the soothing haven of Sleepy Time Chronicle. As the world outside lulls into a peaceful reprieve, we embark on a magical odyssey into the land of dreams. Here, worries evaporate, and the soft murmur of night becomes our guide. Seek your most comfortable sanctuary, close your eyes, and let the gentle night's caress enfold you. In this moment, release all thoughts that linger, for now is the time to embrace the tranquility ahead. Together, we shall enter the realm of slumber, where tranquil dreams eagerly await your presence. The Magical Library Chapter 1 The Whispering Shelves Once upon a time, in the quaint village of Pagemore, nestled among rolling hills and whispering woods, there was a library unlike any other. This library, vast and ancient, was rumored to be alive, its heart beating with the pulse of a thousand stories. Within its walls lived Clara, the librarian's daughter, a girl with eyes as curious as her spirit, and her father, Mr. Eldridge, the keeper of tales. Clara grew up among the endless rows of books, her days filled with the rustle of pages and the scent of old paper. Each book was a friend, each story a new adventure. Her father, a gentle soul with a deep love for his work, had taught Clara the magic of stories, how they could transport you to far-off lands, teach you lessons, and fill your heart with wonder. The library was the village's heart, its shelves holding not just books, but the dreams and whispers of everyone who had ever turned a page within its walls. Mr. Eldridge was not just a librarian, but a guardian of these dreams, guiding his patrons to the stories they needed most. But Clara had always sensed there was more to the library than its shelves and books. At night, when the world was quiet and the moon cast silver beams through the stained glass windows, she could hear the faint whispers of the books talking, sharing tales of their own. On a night when the wind howled like ancient spirits and lightning danced across the sky, Clara nestled among her favorite tomes, her lamp casting a soft glow against the storm's fury. The clock tower in the heart of Pagemore struck twelve, its chime echoing through the silence of the library. It was in this solitary moment, amid the tempest's rage, that a peculiar event unfolded. A book, bound in leather as dark as the night itself and adorned with symbols that shimmered in the lamplight, tumbled from the highest shelf, landing with a thud that seemed to silence the storm outside. Clara, startled yet intrigued, approached the fallen tome. Its cover was cold to the touch, and as she opened it, a gust of wind as if escaping from the pages themselves, extinguished her lamp, plunging the room into darkness. In the fleeting seconds of darkness, Clara heard a soft whisper, like the rustling of leaves. And when the moonlight returned to illuminate the library, her father was gone. In his place, on the floor where he stood moments before, lay a single feather, glowing with an ethereal light. The book lay open, its pages fluttering as if alive, to a passage that spoke of an ancient spell, a spell that could only be broken by solving the mysteries within the library's heart. Clara, holding the luminous feather, felt a surge of determination. The library, with its whispering shelves and breathing tales, had taken her father, entrapping him within its enchanted pages. She knew, with a clarity that filled her with both fear and courage, that it was up to her to save him. 
As dawn crept over Pagemore, casting a golden light through the stained glass of the library, Clara stood alone, holding the luminous feather, her heart heavy with uncertainty. Yet, as the sun's rays touched the shelves, a soft murmuring filled the air, like leaves rustling in a gentle breeze. The books, her longtime friends, began to whisper among themselves in a language only the heart could understand. Clara listened, her eyes wide with wonder, as the books on fairy tales fluttered open, their illustrations coming to life before her eyes. Knights and dragons leaped from the pages, performing a dance of ages past. The novels murmured of adventures on the high seas, of pirates and treasures beyond imagination. Even the dusty tomes of history joined in, their pages turning to reveal the secrets of ancient civilizations. Among the chorus of whispers, one voice stood out, clear and strong. It was the ancient book that had fallen the night her father disappeared. It spoke not in words, but in images and feelings, conveying a message of urgency and hope. Clara understood then that the library itself was alive, its heart beating in rhythm with the stories it housed. The book revealed that her father was trapped in the realm of tales, a prisoner of the spell that had been cast from its pages. To free him, Clara would need to journey through the library's enchanted sections, solving the puzzles that guarded the way. The path would be perilous, filled with challenges that would test her wit, courage, and heart. But the library, in its infinite wisdom, offered Clara a guide. From the depths of its archives, a map materialized, glowing with a soft light. The map depicted the library not as it appeared to the mundane eye, but as a labyrinth of magic and mystery. Each section was marked, the Garden of Words, the Sea of Stories, the Mountain of Myths, and more, each a realm unto itself, each holding a piece of the puzzle to her father's freedom. Clara, with the map in hand and the feather tucked safely in her pocket, took a deep breath. She whispered a thanks to the books, her allies in the adventure ahead. With a determination that surprised even her, she stepped toward the first challenge, the riddle of the silent night, her heart beating in sync with the library's ancient rhythm. With the library now whispering its secrets and encouragement, Clara stood at the threshold of the unknown, the map of lore unfurled before her. The map was not just a guide, but a testament to the library's heart, its veins stretching across the parchment in inks of gold and silver, leading to realms crafted from imagination and dreams. The first realm, marked by a knight's helmet and a crossed sword and shield, lay to the east of her current position, beyond the rows of tales that had whispered good night to her since childhood. Clara memorized the path, tracing her finger along the roots that wound through the Garden of Words, across the Sea of Stories, over the Mountain of Myths, and into the heart of the library itself. Each realm was a world unto its own, guarded by puzzles and challenges that Clara must overcome to progress. The map revealed not just paths, but symbols, each representing a key she would need to collect to unlock the spell binding her father. The symbols were cryptic, a quill, a locket, a crown, and a star, each tied to a realm within the library. Armed with the map and bolstered by the library's whispered blessings, Clara stepped forward her resolve as strong as the tales of heroes and heroines that had filled her childhood. Her first destination was clear, the realm of the silent night, guardian of the passage to the enchanted sections of the library. 
as she navigated through the familiar corridors, the library seemed to shift around her, guiding her steps and illuminating her path with flickers of light that danced between the shelves. Time seemed to bend within the library's walls, the outside world fading away until there was nothing but the journey ahead. Finally, she stood before the entrance to the Silent Night's realm, marked by a suit of armor that gleamed in the library's soft light. The knight, cast in silver and holding a shield emblazoned with a closed book, awaited her approach, its presence commanding yet still. Clara, drawing upon every story of courage she had ever read, stepped forward and spoke, her voice steady. I seek passage to save my father, to challenge the spell that holds him. I am ready for your riddle, silent knight. The knight's visor lifted, revealing nothing within but a deep darkness that seemed to stretch into infinity. Then, in a voice that resonated like the echo of a distant bell, the knight presented his challenge. I stand guard over stories untold, for those brave enough to seek truths bold, my riddle for you, seeker of lore, what is the key that opens every door? Clara pondered the riddle, her mind racing through tales of magic keys and secret words, until clarity struck. With a heart full of hope, she answered, The key is courage, for with it, we dare to open not just doors, but our service to the world's endless stories. The knight's shield glowed, the book emblem shining brightly, then swung open like a door, revealing a path that shimmered with the promise of adventures yet to come. Clara had passed the first test, her journey through the magical library now truly begun. With the passage opened by the silent night, Clara found herself on the threshold of a realm that whispered of magic and mystery. The air shimmered with a light that seemed to be made of the very essence of stories, casting shadows that danced and played along the walls. Ahead of her lay a path that wound its way through an ethereal landscape, where the whisper of pages turning could be heard in the gentle breeze. The silent night, now a silent sentinel at the gate of adventure, nodded to Clara in approval. His challenge had been a test of heart and mind, and Clara had proven herself worthy. With a deep breath, Clara stepped forward into the unknown, her heart buoyed by her success and the silent encouragement of the night behind her. The path led Clara through a corridor lined with shelves that reached up to the ceiling, each filled with books that glowed with a soft light. These were no ordinary tales. They were the stories of heroes and heroines who had faced their fears, overcome great challenges. Clara felt a kinship with these characters, understanding now that her own story was being woven into the fabric of the library's magic. As she walked, Clara noticed that the path was leading her towards a clearing in the heart of the library. Here, the shelves parted to reveal a space that seemed to be at the center of all stories. In this clearing stood a table upon which lay an open book, its pages glowing with a light that beckoned her closer. Clara approached the book with reverence, understanding that this was another piece of the puzzle in her quest to save her father. The page before her showed a drawing of a heart surrounded by four locks, each different from the next. Beneath the drawing, the words read, The heart of the library beats within the courage of its seeker. Four keys you must find, each bound to a realm where stories dwell. Only when the heart is unlocked can the spell be broken. Clara realized then that her journey would take her through the library's magical realms, each guarding a key that would unlock a part of the heart. The Silent Knight had opened the way, but it was up to her to venture forth and retrieve the keys. 
With newfound resolve, Clara closed the book and looked around the clearing. Four paths stretched out before her, each leading to a different realm of the library. She remembered the symbols on the map of lore, the quill, the locket, the crown, and the star. Each symbol represented a key, a realm, and a challenge that she must overcome. Clara took a moment to gather her thoughts and plan her next steps. She decided to begin her quest with the Garden of Words, a realm where every plant and flower was made of stories, and where, she hoped, she would find the first key. With the silent night's riddle solved and the passage unveiled, Clara now understood the true nature of her quest. It was not just about saving her father, but about proving the strength of her own heart and the power of stories to overcome darkness. Clara stepped into the Garden of Words, a realm where the air was perfumed with the scent of ink and parchment and where every leaf whispered a different tale. The garden was a tapestry of stories with paths lined by hedges of prose and flowers blooming with poetry. The sun here seemed to shine brighter. Its light filtered through a canopy of leaves that rustled with the sound of turning pages. The garden of words was alive, its plants growing not from soil, but from the stories that fed their roots. Each plant, each flower held a story, from the tragedies of wilted roses to the epic tales of towering oaks. Clara was mesmerized, walking among them, feeling their words brush against her skin like soft whispers. In the heart of the garden stood a fountain, its waters clear and flowing with sentences that spiraled into tales of love adventure, and mystery. It was here the map of lore had indicated that Clara would find the first key, the quill of echoes hidden within a bloom that sang of ancient magic. As Clara approached the fountain, the garden seemed to sense her quest, the whispers growing louder, guiding her towards a solitary bloom that glowed softly by the water's edge. This flower, unlike the others, was made of delicate paper petals, each inscribed with words of power and wisdom. With a gentle touch, Clara reached for the flower, and as she did, the petals opened, revealing the quill of echoes, a feather as light as air, yet glowing with an inner light. As she took the quill in her hand, the garden burst into a chorus of voices, singing tales of heroes and heroines who had faced their fears with courage and heart. Clara knew then that the quill was more than a key. It was a symbol of the stories that had shaped her, that had guided her to this moment. With the quill secured, Clara turned back to the map, now with one key glowing brightly, indicating her success in the Garden of Words. As she left the garden, the paths and plants seemed to bow in respect, acknowledging her bravery and the journey she had undertaken. The passage back to the main library shimmered into view, a path cleared by the silent night's blessing and her own determination. With the first key in hand, Clara felt a surge of confidence. She had stepped into the unknown, faced the challenges of the Garden of Words, and emerged victorious. The journey ahead would be fraught with more trials, each realm holding its own dangers and delights, but Clara was ready. She at the heart of a storyteller, and within the library's enchanted walls, that was the most powerful magic of all. The passage back to the heart of the library was a journey in itself, a transition from the realm of stories back to the place where all tales began and ended. As Clara walked, the whispering shelves greeted her return, 
their voices a mixture of congratulations and caution for the challenges ahead. Now, with the Garden of Words behind her and the Quill of Echoes safely in her possession, Clara prepared to face the next realm, each step taking her closer to her father and the heart of the library. Chapter 2, The Labyrinth of Legends Clara stepped into the Labyrinth of Legends, her heart filled with a mixture of awe and anticipation. The Garden of Words, with its whispering foliage and blooming tales, was the first realm she encountered. A verdant world where the very essence of storytelling nourished the earth. The air was alive with the murmurs of countless stories, each leaf fluttering with the rhythm of narratives long cherished and tales freshly spun. Clara wandered through this maze of storytelling, her fingers brushing against the pages that composed each plant, feeling the pulse of words that fed the roots and blossoms. Here, in the heart of the Garden of Words, Clara discovered the profound connection between the tales we tell and the world we inhabit. She realized that stories were not mere escapism, but sustenance for the soul, shaping dreams and fueling the imagination. This garden was a testament to the library's power, a place where stories grew wild and free, each bloom a different tale waiting to be told. As she delved deeper into the garden, Clara came upon a clearing where the story flowers were more vibrant, their hues dazzling. Under a sun that shone with the brightness of enlightenment, in the center of this clearing stood a tree unlike any other, its branches heavy with books instead of leaves, each tome bound in bark and vine. Approaching the tree, Clara felt a pull an invisible thread drawing her towards one book in particular. This book, glowing with a soft, inviting light, seemed to call her name, whispering secrets only she could hear. With a gentle touch, Clara plucked the book from the branch, and as she did, the garden fell silent, all eyes, if they had them, on her. Opening the book, Clara found the pages blank, save for a single line that read, To feed the soul and mind, one must nurture the stories that bind. It was then that Clara understood her role in this garden. She was not just a visitor, but a gardener of tales, tasked with nurturing the stories that fed the world. With the quill still in her possession, Clara dipped the tip into the inkwell of her heart, and began to write. She wrote of her journey, of the challenges she faced, and the lessons she learned. With each word, the pages filled, and the garden around her blossomed anew, each plant growing richer and more vibrant with the tale of her adventure. As she wrote the last word, the book closed on its own, sealing her story within its pages. The tree from which she had plucked the book shivered with delight, and from its branches, a new bloom appeared. This flower, unlike any other in the garden, bore a single, glowing key at its heart. The locket of legends, the second key, needed to unlock her father's prison. Clara reached for the locket, and as she did, the garden erupted in a chorus of whispers, a symphony of stories celebrating the addition of her own. With the locket of legends in hand, Clara knew she was one step closer to saving her father and unlocking the heart of the library. The garden of words had taught her the importance of stories, not just as tales to be told, but as nourishment for the soul and mind. With a renewed sense of purpose, Clara stepped back into the labyrinth, ready to face the next realm and the challenges it held. Her journey through the labyrinth of legends was far from over, but in the garden of words, Clara had found the strength of stories, a strength that would guide her through the trials ahead. 
After her enlightening journey through the Garden of Words, Clara found herself at the edge of a vast and endless sea of stories. This was no ordinary sea. Its waters were deep with the ink of countless tales, its waves echoing with the voices of a thousand characters, each telling their own story. The sea shimmered under a moon that cast a silvery glow illuminating the path forward. Clara could see that to continue her quest, she would need to navigate these waters, to sail across the sea of stories, to reach the mountain of myths that lay on the distant horizon. At the shore, a boat awaited her, its sails made of pages, its mast a sturdy quill. Clara stepped into the boat with a sense of determination, understanding that this journey would test her in ways the garden never could. Here, in the fluidity of the sea, stories were not rooted in soil, but floated free, colliding and merging in the waters of imagination. As Clara set sail, the sea began to tell its tales. She passed islands where love stories bloomed like exotic flowers, and icebergs where tragedies glistened cold and stark. There were whirlpools of adventure that threatened to pull her under, and calm bays where tales of peace and serenity soothed her soul. Navigating the sea of stories required more than just physical skill. It demanded an open heart and a keen ear. Clara listened to the stories, letting them guide her, learning from their morals, and being buoyed by their joys. She began to understand that every story, no matter how small or grand, held its own truth, its own lesson to be learned. But the sea was not without its dangers. A storm of conflict and misunderstanding rose, threatening to capsize her vessel. Clara realized that to weather the storm, she would need to draw upon the lessons of the stories she had encountered. She stood firm, steering her boat with the conviction that every story, including her own, had the power to overcome adversity. As the storm abated, a new challenge emerged. From the depths rose the Leviathan of Doubt, a creature that fed on the fears and uncertainties of those who navigated the sea of stories. It towered over Clara, its eyes a reflection of her own doubts. Yet Clara was not deterred. She reached for the locket of legends, its glow a beacon of her achievements and the love for her father that powered her journey. She spoke aloud her belief in the power of stories, in the lessons she had learned, and the challenges she had overcome. Her words, true and heartfelt, reached the Leviathan, and in its eyes, Clara saw a change. The creature of doubt began to shrink, its form dissolving into the ink of the sea, leaving behind only a ripple of understanding. As the sea of stories calmed, Clara sailed on, her heart lighter, her resolve stronger. She had faced the Leviathan of doubt and emerged victorious, her journey enriched by the tales that flowed around her. Finally, the mountain of myths loomed ahead, its peaks shrouded in the mists of legend. Clara knew that her journey was far from over, but with two keys in her possession and the wisdom of countless stories in her heart, she was ready for whatever lay ahead. The sea of stories had taught her the power of narrative, to confront fear, to navigate through storms of doubt, and to emerge stronger on the other side. With her course set for the mountain of myths, Clara sailed forward, guided by the light of stories old and new, her adventure weaving into the tapestry of tales that span the sea. That after her victorious navigation through the sea of stories, Clara's boat reached the shore of a land that rose sharply into the clouds above. Before her stood the mountain of myths, its slopes carved from the very essence of legends that had been whispered through the ages. 
This towering peak was home to the myths that shaped worlds, its paths marked by the deeds of gods and heroes. Clara stepped onto the land with a sense of reverence, her eyes lifted to the summit that pierced the heavens. She knew her journey up the mountain would be one of discovery, a path where each step unveiled the power and majesty of ancient tales. The mountain was a testament to the endurance of these stories, their ability to inspire and teach across countless generations. The path upward was lined with inscriptions, symbols etched into the stone that spoke of the trials and triumphs of mythical figures. Clara realized that to ascend the mountain, she must understand these symbols, deciphering their meaning to unlock the path forward. With the locket of legends warm against her chest and the quill of echoes in hand, Clara approached the first set of symbols. They depicted the tale of a hero who faced a beast to save their beloved, a story of courage and sacrifice. Clara, drawing upon the knowledge gained from her journey thus far, deciphered the symbol's meaning, recognizing the universal themes of love and bravery that resonated with her own quest. As she solved the riddle of the symbols, the mountain seemed to acknowledge her understanding, the path ahead clearing, inviting her to continue her ascent. With each step, Clara encountered more symbols, each representing a myth that spoke of wisdom, strength, and the quest for understanding. She learned of the phoenix's rebirth from ashes, of the trickster who challenged the gods, and of the guardian who protected the secrets of the universe. The mountain of myths was not just a physical challenge, but a journey through the collective consciousness of humanity, a reminder of the shared stories that bind us across time and culture. Clara felt a deep connection to these tales, understanding that her own story was but a thread in the vast tapestry of narratives that shaped the world. That sh the highest peak of the mountain was guarded by a gate, beyond which lay the realm of the Crown of Clarity, the third key Clara needed to unlock her father's prison. The gate was adorned with the most complex symbol yet, a depiction of the world tree, its branches reaching into the heavens, its roots delving into the depths of the earth, a symbol of life, connectivity, and the endless sickly of creation and destruction. Clara stood before the symbol her mind racing to decipher its meaning. She realized that the world tree represented the interconnectedness of all stories, of all life. Her journey, her father's plight, and the library's magic were all part of a larger narrative, one that stretched beyond the confines of time and place. With this understanding, Clara spoke the truth she had uncovered, her voice echoing against the stone. We are all part of the same story, connected through the roots of our tales and the branches of our dreams. The gate responded to her insight, swinging open to reveal a chamber where the crown of clarity rested. Clara stepped forward, her heart full of the wisdom she had gained. The crown glowing with an ethereal light, symbolized the insight that comes from understanding the deeper truths of our stories. As Clara placed the crown upon her head, she felt a surge of clarity, a deep understanding of her purpose and the path that lay ahead. She had deciphered the ancient symbols, learned from the legends of old, and found the third key. The mountain of myths had taught her the power of understanding, the strength found in the shared narratives of humanity, and the clarity that comes from seeing the connections that bind us. With the crown of clarity, 
Clara was ready to face the next challenge, her resolve stronger than ever, her story woven into the legends of the mountain. Descending from the mountain of myths, Clara found herself at the entrance to the maze of morals, a labyrinth that pulsated with the wisdom of ages. This was no ordinary maze. Its walls were built from the stories of virtue and vice, each path a narrative of choices and their consequences. The air was thick with the whispers of tales that spoke of honesty, bravery, kindness, and greed, echoing the eternal dance between light and shadow in the human heart. As Clara stepped into the maze, the stories came to life around her, enveloping her in their moral dilemmas. She faced challenges that tested her, not through feats of strength or intellect, but through the purity of her intentions and the depth of her compassion. Each turn in the maze presented Clara with a choice, a decision that illuminated the virtues she held dear and the vices she sought to overcome. The maze of morals was a mirror reflecting the complexities of the human condition. In one turn, Clara encountered a story of envy that twisted the path before her, darkening the way with shadows of doubt and malice. But Clara, guided by her heart, found the light of gratitude, illuminating the path forward, dispelling the darkness with the recognition of her own blessings and the value of cherishing what she had. Further into the maze, Clara faced the specter of greed, a tale that tempted her with promises of riches and power, a shortcut through the labyrinth if she would only forsake her quest. But Clara, remembering the lessons of the sea of stories and the mountain of myths, knew that true wealth lay not in gold or dominion, but in the love she bore for her father and the integrity of her mission. With a firm step, she chose the longer path, one that led her deeper into the heart of the maze, but closer to the true essence of her journey. With each choice, the maze responded, the walls shifting, opening new paths while closing others. Clara realized that the maze was not a prison, but a journey of self-discovery a reflection of her own moral compass guiding her through the darkness. At the heart of the maze, Clara found herself in a clearing, where stood a statue of a figure, blindfolded and holding a set of scales. It was Justice, the guardian of the Star of Virtue, the fourth key Clara needed to unlock her father's prison. The scales shimmered with a light that beckoned her forward. Clara approached the statue, understanding that the final test of the maze of morals was before her. The voice of justice, both stern and gentle, filled the clearing, asking Clara to weigh her actions, to balance her virtues against her vices, and to judge herself with the honesty and clarity she had shown throughout her journey. With a heart full of courage and a soul tempered by the trials of the maze, Clara spoke of her journey, of the choices she had made and the lessons she had learned. She spoke of compassion over envy, generosity over greed, truth over deceit, and love over fear. The scales, responding to the truth in Clara's words, tipped in favor of virtue, Glowing with approval, the star of virtue materialized before her, a radiant star that pulsed with the light of moral clarity. Clara, with the star of virtue in hand, felt a profound sense of peace. The maze of morals had shown her the power of her choices, the strength of her character, and the light of her integrity. With the fourth key secured, Clara was now ready to face the final challenges that lay ahead. 
her path illuminated by the virtues that she had embraced and the moral lessons that had guided her through the darkness. The maze of morals, with its twisting paths and profound lessons, was a testament to the journey of self-discovery, a reminder that the light of virtue can guide us through the darkest mazes of life. Emerging from the maze of morals, Clara found herself before a vast chasm that separated her from the next part of her journey. Spanning this divide was a bridge unlike any she had seen before. It was not made of stone or wood, but of the woven strands of belief and faith from countless cultures around the world. Each thread shimmered with the essence of the tradition's myths and spiritual understandings that had guided humanity through the ages. As Clara stepped onto the bridge, she felt the weight of many worlds under her feet, the collective hopes, dreams, and convictions of people from every corner of the earth. The bridge did not just connect two physical points. It bridged the gap between differing beliefs, showing that at the core of humanity lies a shared desire for connection, understanding, and peace. With each step, Clara experienced the beliefs that wove the bridge. She heard the prayers of ancient civilizations lifted to the sky, felt the solemn rituals of distant tribes pulsating in the air, and saw the colorful celebrations of faith that painted the human story with hope and joy. The bridge was a testament to the diversity of human belief and the power of faith to inspire and uplift. Walking the bridge of beliefs, Clara realized the importance of empathy and understanding in bridging the divides between different worlds. She understood that while beliefs may vary, the underlying values of love, kindness, and respect are universal. This understanding filled her with a profound sense of unity and purpose, reinforcing her determination to complete her quest. Halfway across the bridge, Clara encountered a guardian, a figure that embodied the collective wisdom of the cultures represented by the bridge. The guardian spoke of the challenges that arise from misunderstanding and conflict, but also of the incredible potential for harmony and growth when diverse beliefs are embraced with an open heart and mind. The Guardian presented Clara with a challenge. To cross the remainder of the bridge, she must demonstrate her understanding and respect for the beliefs that it represented. Clara, drawing upon the experiences and lessons of her journey, shared stories of the heroes and myths she had encountered, the morals she had learned, and the virtues she had upheld. With each story, the threads of the bridge glowed brighter, resonating with the truth and sincerity of Clara's words. She spoke of the unity found in diversity, the strength in empathy, and the bridges built by understanding. Her words, like the threads of the bridge, wove a tapestry of connection, highlighting the shared humanity that binds us all. As Clara reached the end of the bridge, the Guardian nodded in approval, acknowledging her wisdom and compassion. In recognition of her understanding, the Guardian bestowed upon Clara the final key she needed the Amulet of Unity. This amulet, glowing with the light of interconnectedness, symbolized the power of empathy and understanding in uniting different worlds. With the Amulet of Unity in hand, Clara felt a renewed sense of purpose and a deeper connection to the world around her. The Bridge of Beliefs had taught her the importance of embracing diversity fostering empathy and building bridges of understanding to overcome division and discord. As Clara continued her journey, the lessons of the bridge remained with her, a reminder that in the tapestry of human experience, each thread of belief and tradition 
contributes to the richness and beauty of the whole. Her quest to save her father and unlock the heart of the library was not just a journey through magical realms, but a journey through the diversity of human spirit and the power of unity in the face of adversity. Beyond the Bridge of Beliefs, Clara entered a clearing shrouded in mist, where the air was thick with tension and the scent of smoldering embers. Here, in this secluded arena, awaited the final challenge of her journey through the labyrinth of legends, the fearsome Dragon of Doubt. This dragon was not just a beast of scale and flame, it was the embodiment of fear, uncertainty, and the doubts that plague the hearts of all who dare to dream. Its eyes glowed with the fire of skepticism, its breath a smoky manifestation of the fears that could freeze a heart and halt even the bravest steps. The bra Clara stood at the edge of the clearing, her resolve tested as never before. She could feel the weight of the dragon's gaze, the heat of its doubt searing the air around her. But within, Clara burned a flame of her own, kindled from the trials she had faced, the lessons she had learned, and the keys she had earned on her quest. From her side, Clara drew the Sword of Perseverance, a blade forged from the challenges she had overcome and sharpened by her unwavering determination to save her father. In her other hand, she held the Shield of Confidence, crafted from the belief in her own strength and the trust in the truths she had discovered along her journey. As the Dragon of Doubt roared, a fearsome sound that echoed the darkest fears and insecurities, Clara stepped forward, her weapons raised. The dragon unleashed a torrent of flame, a blaze of fear intended to overwhelm her. Yet as the fire approached, it was met by the shield of confidence, its surface glowing with the light of Clara's convictions, reflecting the dragon's flame back upon itself. The dragon, taken aback by Clara's resilience, attacked again, this time with sharp talons of skepticism, aiming to tear at the very fabric of her belief. But Clara, with the agility of hope and the strength of purpose, wielded the Sword of Perseverance, parrying each strike, her every move a testament to her journey and the truths she had embraced. The battle raged, a dance of fire and steel, doubt and determination. Clara moved with the grace of one who knows her cause is just, her every strike a blow against the shadows of doubt. And with each successful parry and counter, the dragon's flames dimmed, its power waning in the face of Clara's indomitable spirit. In the final moments of the duel, Clara stood firm, her eyes locked on the dragon's with a cry that held all the love for her father. The lessons of the labyrinth and the belief in her own strength, Clara charged. The sword of perseverance struck true, piercing the heart of doubt, while the shield of confidence protected her from the dying flames of fear. As the dragon fell, its form dissipated into smoke, leaving behind only the echo of its roar and a final key, the crystal of hope, shining with the light of Clara's victory and the promise of her quest's end. Clara, with the crystal of hope in hand, felt a surge of triumph, not just for the defeat of the dragon, but for the overcoming of her own doubts. She had faced the embodiment of fear and emerged victorious, her heart lighter, her resolve stronger, and her path clearer. The duel with the Dragon of Doubt was more than a battle. It was a rite of passage, a testament to the power of belief in oneself, the strength found in perseverance, and the light of hope that can illuminate even the darkest of fears. With the final key secured, Clara knew that the path to saving her father and unlocking the heart of the library 
was now open. The lessons of the labyrinth of legends, the virtues she had embraced, and the trials she had overcome, all led to this moment. A step closer to the end of her quest and the beginning of her greatest challenge. Chapter 3 The Heart of the Library With the final key in hand, Clara stood before the entrance to the heart of the library, a place few had ever reached and fewer still had understood. The door before her, crafted from ancient wood and inscribed with runes of knowledge and wisdom, opened silently at her approach, as if acknowledging the trials she had endured and the lessons she had learned. Stepping into the heart of the library, Clara found herself in the Chamber of Choices. It was a vast, circular room, with walls lined by countless shelves, each filled with books that pulsed with a soft, ethereal light. These were not ordinary books. They were the embodiments of decisions, the records of every choice her father had made throughout his life. Each voluma represented a crossroads, a moment where the path of destiny had forked and a decision had made its mark on the fabric of his story. As Clara walked among the shelves, she realized the magnitude of the journey she had undertaken. The Chamber of Choices was not just a repository of past decisions. It was a reflection on the weight of choices and the ripples they sent through the streams of time. Each book she touched whispered its tale, a story of joy or regret, of paths taken and those left unexplored. In the center of the chamber stood a pedestal upon which lay an open book unlike any other. This book, bound in leather that seemed to shift and change under the soft light of the chamber, was the book of now, the ongoing story of her father's choices, and the one that Clara needed to influence to save him. As Clara approached the pedestal, she felt the weight of her own choices settling upon her shoulders. The keys she had collected, the quill of echoes, the locket of legends, the crown of clarity, the star of virtue, the amulet of unity, and the crystal of hope began to glow, their light converging on the book of now. The pages of the book turned of their own accord, stopping on a blank page that awaited the imprint of new decisions. Clara understood then that the power to save her father lay not in undoing. The choices of the past, but in shaping the decisions of the present with the wisdom and virtues she had gathered on her journey. With a deep breath, Clara took the Quill of Echoes and, guided by the lessons of the Labyrinth of Legends and the trials she had faced, began to write. Her words were not just ink on paper. They were manifestations of her intent, shaped by the understanding and empathy she had learned from the Bridge of Beliefs, the courage she had honed in the duel with the Dragon of Doubt, and the clarity she had found on the mountain of myths. As she wrote, the Chamber of Choices resonated with the power of her decisions, the shelves vibrating with the energy of potential futures being rewritten. The Book of Now absorbed her words, its pages glowing with a light that grew brighter with each sentence, each choice that Clara made with the power of intent. When Clara finished writing, the chamber fell silent, the shelves still, as if the library itself was holding its breath. Then, from deep within the heart of the library, a soft, harmonious sound began to rise, a melody of acceptance and renewal. The Book of Now closed, its cover sealing the choices Clara had made, the path she had chosen for her father and herself. The Chamber of Choices had taught Clara the profound impact of decisions, the responsibility that came with the power of choice, and the understanding that the future is not a road laid before us, 
but a path we create with every step, every decision, every act of will. With her father's fate now influenced by the wisdom and virtues she had embraced, Clara stepped out of the chamber of choices, ready to face the next challenge, her heart buoyed by the knowledge that the choices we make, driven by love and guided by wisdom, have the power to change our stories and the world around us. Beyond the chamber of choices, Clara found herself in a corridor that narrowed to a single, ornate door. Its surface carved with images of eyes, each pair unique, as if capturing the essence of those who had gazed upon them throughout the ages. With a gentle push, the door swung open, revealing a room bathed in a soft, silver light that seemed to emanate from the very air itself. In the center of the room stood the Mirror of Truth, a tall, elegant mirror framed in ancient wood, vines of ivy and blooms of unknown flowers twisting around its edges. The mirror surface rippled like the surface of a calm pond, waiting for the Stone of Truth to disturb its peace. Clara approached the mirror with a mixture of anticipation and apprehension. She had faced many trials, battled fearsome creatures, and navigated the labyrinthine depths of the library. But the prospect of confronting her true self, stripped of pretense and illusion, was perhaps the most daunting challenge yet. As she stood before the mirror, Clara's reflection appeared, not as she was, but as she had been at the start of her journey, uncertain, filled with doubts, her resolve shadowed by fear. The mirror was not reflecting her outward appearance, but the depths of her soul, the parts of herself she had struggled to acknowledge and overcome. Clara watched as the scenes of her journey played out in the mirror. Her battles with the dragon of doubt, her navigation of the sea of stories, her ascent of the mountain of myths. With each scene, her reflection changed, becoming stronger, more confident, the light in her eyes growing brighter with the wisdom and courage she had gained. The mirror of truth then showed Clara her fears, losing her father, failing in her quest, the uncertainty of the future. But alongside these fears, it showed her the strength she had drawn from each challenge, the virtues she had embodied, and the love that had driven her forward. Clara saw, reflected in the mirror, not just her fears, but her capacity to face and overcome them. In the mirror's truth, Clara found a newfound strength. She understood that her fears and doubts were part of her, but they did not define her. Her journey through the library, the lessons learned, and the challenges overcome had forged her into someone, more than she had been someone capable of changing her fate and the fate of those she loved. With a deep, steadying breath, Clara reached out and touched the mirror's surface. Where her fingers met the glass, ripples spread and the image shifted, revealing not scenes of her journey, but a single, clear reflection of Clara as she was now. Determined, resilient, and ready to face whatever lay ahead with a heart full of courage and a mind sharpened by wisdom. The mirror of truth had revealed the essence of who Clara had become, affirming her purpose and strengthening her resolve. She stepped away from the mirror, not as the girl who had entered the library, but as the heroine of her own story, ready to confront the final challenges and embrace her destiny. Leaving the room and the mirror behind, Clara felt a sense of peace and certainty. The mirror of truth had not only shown her who she was, but had reminded her of the power within her to shape her story and the stories of those around her. With a clear vision of her true self, Clara moved forward, her path illuminated by the truth of her own heart. 
As Clara stepped out of the room that housed the Mirror of Truth, her heart beating with a newfound resolve, the library seemed to respond to her inner transformation. The walls glimmered softly, and the air thrummed with a quiet anticipation, guiding her deeper into its heart. The path unfolded before her, leading to a chamber that pulsed with a warm, inviting light, a stark contrast to the cool, silver luminescence of the room she had just left. In the center of this new chamber stood a pedestal, bathed in a beam of light that seemed to pierce the very heart of the library itself. Floating above the pedestal was the key of courage, its metal glowing with an inner fire, embers of bravery and determination flickering along its intricate design. This was no ordinary key. It was the embodiment of Clara's journey, a testament to the courage she had amassed and the fears she had vanquished. Approaching the pedestal, Clara felt a surge of energy coursing through her, a resonance between the key and the strength she had found within herself. The key of courage was not merely an object to be taken, but a symbol of the trials she had faced, the doubts she had overcome, and the growth she had undergone. As her hand closed around the key, a warmth spread through her, a confirmation of her readiness to face the final leg of her quest. The key seemed to beat like a heart in her palm, its glow intensifying with her touch, a tangible manifestation of her own inner light. Clara understood then that the key of courage was more than a tool to unlock her father's spell. It was a reminder that true bravery comes from within, from facing one's fears and choosing to move forward despite them. It was courage that had propelled her through the challenges of the library, courage that had allowed her to confront her true self in the mirror of truth, and courage that would guide her in the trials that lay ahead. With the key securely in her grasp, Clara turned from the pedestal, her gaze fixed on the path that led onwards. The library around her seemed to acknowledge her achievement, the shelves whispering words of encouragement, the air filled with a palpable sense of expectation. The key of courage, glowing steadily in her hand, lit her way through the library's heart, its light casting long shadows that danced along the walls. Clara moved with purpose, each step taking her closer to her father. To the resolution of her quest, and to the final confrontation that awaited her. As she walked, Clara reflected on the journey that had brought her to this point, the lessons she had learned, and the virtues she had embodied. She realized that each key she had collected, each trial she had overcome, was not just a step towards saving her father, but a step towards understanding herself, her strengths, and her capacity to effect change. The key of courage was the culmination of her journey, a beacon of hope in the darkness and a symbol of the bravery that lies in the heart of every hero. With the key in hand and her resolve steeled, Clara was ready to face whatever lay ahead. Her courage a shining light that would guide her through the darkness. As she approached the final chamber, where the spell that bound her father awaited, Clara knew that the true test of her courage was yet to come. But she also knew that she was no longer the girl who had entered the library. She was a warrior, a guardian of stories, and a daughter on the brink of saving her father. The key of courage, glowing ever brighter, was her promise to herself and to her father that no darkness was too deep, no fear too great, and no challenge insurmountable. The chamber that lay before Clara was vast, its ceiling lost to shadows, giving the impression of a night sky without stars. 
In the center of this chamber stood a pedestal, upon which rested an object covered by a cloth as dark as the void above. The air hummed with a quiet power, as if the very essence of the library's heart pulsed within these walls. Clara approached the pedestal, her steps echoing softly on the stone floor. The key of courage, still warm in her hand, seemed to vibrate in response to the energy of the room. With a gentle touch, Clara lifted the cloth, revealing the final puzzle. The puzzle was unlike any she had seen before. It was a complex three-dimensional lattice of interlocking pieces, each inscribed with symbols, that represented the lessons Clara had learned on her journey. A quill, a locket, a crown, a star, an amulet, and a crystal. The pieces were made of a material that seemed to shift between solid and ethereal, hinting at the need for not just physical manipulation, but a deeper, more intuitive understanding. Clara understood then that this puzzle was the culmination of her journey, a test not of her intellect alone, but of her wisdom, the wisdom to apply the knowledge she had gained, the virtues she had embraced, and the courage she had found within herself. Taking a deep breath, Clara reached out to the puzzle. As her fingers brushed against the first piece, the lattice began to glow softly, responding to her touch. She moved the piece, guided not by logic alone, but by the lessons of her journey. The first piece moved easily into place, its path guided by the light of the quill of echoes. Clara remembered the Garden of Words, where she learned the power of stories to feed the soul and mind. She applied this lesson, understanding that each piece of the puzzle was part of a larger narrative, and that finding their place required listening to the stories they told. With each piece Clara moved, the symbols began to resonate, creating a harmony that filled the chamber with light and music. The Locket of Legends reminded her of the depth of history and the breadth of humanity's tales. The Crown of Clarity showed her the importance of insight and the value of seeing beyond the surface. The Star of Virtue spoke of the moral choices that define us, while the Amulet of Unity emphasized the strength found in empathy and connection. As the puzzle neared completion, Clara found herself facing a choice that mirrored the complexity of the maze itself. Two pieces remained, each seemingly fitting the final space, yet only one would complete the puzzle correctly. Clara paused, reflecting on the journey that had brought her here, the decisions she had made, and the truths she had uncovered. Then, with a clarity born of her experiences, Clara chose the piece that represented not just the culmination of her journey, but the essence of her growth. She placed it into the puzzle, and as she did, a brilliant light erupted from the lattice, enveloping Clara in warmth and energy. The final puzzle was solved, but it was Clara's journey, her willingness to learn, to grow, and to face her fears, that was the true solution. The chamber brightened, revealing not a ceiling lost to shadows, but a sky filled with stars, each one a story, a lesson, a memory from her journey. Clara stood in the heart of the library, surrounded by the light of her achievements, understanding that the wisdom to apply knowledge was the greatest lesson of all. The final puzzle had tested her, but in solving it, Clara had unlocked something far greater than a physical door or spell. She had unlocked the full potential of her own heart and mind. As the light from the solved puzzle faded, Clara noticed a change in the air of the chamber, a shift that hinted at the end of a long, enchanting night. The stone beneath her feet seemed to hum with a quiet joy 
and the shadows that danced along the walls now whispered of dawn. It was in this moment of tranquility that Clara heard a sound, more welcome than any melody or whisper of magic. The voice of her father, free from the spell that had bound him. Turning, she saw him stepping out of the light, his eyes alight with pride and relief. Clara, he said, his voice thick with emotion. You've done what I never could. You've unlocked the heart of the library. Clara rushed to embrace him, the tears in her eyes a mixture of joy and disbelief. Here, in the heart of the library they both loved, they were reunited, their bonds strengthened by the trials and triumphs of Clara's journey. As they stood together, Clara and her father looked around at the chamber, now glowing softly in the light of dawn. The puzzle, once a daunting challenge, now lay completed, a testament to Clara's courage, wisdom, and heart. Her father, taking her hand, spoke of the library's true magic. It's not in the enchantments that guard our doors, nor in the spells that protect our tomes, he said. It's in the stories we safeguard, the lessons they teach, and the hearts they touch. You, Clara, have reminded us of this. You've shown that the greatest magic lies within. Together, they walked through the library, its halls no longer just corridors of stone and wood, but pathways through the collective soul of humanity. Each book they passed, each whisper of pages turning, reinforced their resolve to keep the library's magic alive, to ensure that its stories would continue to inspire, teach, and comfort generations to come. Clara, with her father's guidance, took up the mantle of the librarian with a new vision. They worked to open the library's doors wider, inviting in those who sought knowledge, solace, and adventure. They organized readings, discussions, and journeys through the library's enchanted realms, sharing its wonders with all who wished to partake. The library became a beacon, a place where the magic of stories could ignite dreams and where the legacy of the librarian was not just in the preservation of tales, but in the sharing of their wisdom and wonder. Clara's journey through the library, her battles with doubt and fear, and her triumphant return not only saved her father, but also rekindled the library's true purpose. Her story woven into the fabric of the library's magic, became a legend in its own right, inspiring those who heard it to embark on their own journeys of discovery and courage. As years passed, Clara and her father watched the library grow, its magic deepening with each new story added to its shelves. They saw visitors come and go, each leaving with a piece of the library's magic, each adding their own story to its endless tapestry. And so, the librarian's legacy lived on, a testament to the power of stories to change the world, the strength found in courage and wisdom, and the magic that resides in the heart of every seeker. Clara and her father, guardians of this legacy, stood together at the dawn of a new era for the library, their hearts full of hope for the future and gratitude for the journey that had brought them here. In the heart of the library, where magic and knowledge danced in eternal harmony, Clara's story became a beacon of light for all who sought to discover the magic within themselves and the stories that shape our world.